Hey everyone, just wanted to do a quick video on what my current project is. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a long-term project given the complexity of it, uh, but I'm going to be working on a hyper-velocity rocket. Uh, what that is, is a rocket that relies solely on kinetic energy rather than explosives like traditional rockets. Uh, this rocket will go at least 5,000 feet per second, at least that's our goal. Exploratory development is continuing with hypervelocity technology in which high kinetic energy alone is the destructive factor. The hypervelocity missile achieves acceleration of nearly 4,000 miles per hour with the shortest in-tube burning time of any rocket ever developed. This technology is applicable to development of new anti-tank weapon systems. Hypervelocity rockets that rely on tungsten penetrators have been in development since the early 80s. They've progressed up until the early 2000s, but from there they've really kind of fallen off in terms of development. In the 20 to 30 years of development, there's been quite a few different versions of the hypervelocity rocket launcher made by different companies. Lockheed Martin had their LOSAT and their SeaChem. Raytheon had their HATM, which is the hypervelocity anti tank guided missile, which worked in a tow missile launcher, as well as smaller companies developing their own versions in commonly available sizes like the 2.75 inch Hydra rocket pods. Uh, what we're going to be doing is replicating one of the earlier projects called the Spike. It was developed by Missile Army, U.S. Army Missile Command uh, at Redstone Arsenal. Uh, this project was called SPIKE, uh, and that stands for Single Penetrator Kinetic Energy Hypervelocity Rocket. Uh, this was a 2-inch rocket, roughly about 42 inches long. It carried a 1-pound tungsten rod. It traveled about 5,000 feet per second. In later development of these rockets, they had multi flechette style warheads where it would fire up to 18 to 216 small flechette style tungsten penetrators. It served different roles during its development. It started out as anti-armor or anti-tank. It later went into anti-aircraft or anti-helicopter roles. We've been working on this in the background for almost two years heavily researching the project from news articles to research papers to uh, we found many of the patents and we've also spoken to uh, a couple people that have worked on the project or related to the project and they've given their story uh, just any useful information uh, just to help us research everything that we found is in the public domain so we we're able to share it we don't have anything that uh, you know, restricted information, which is nice. At this point, we currently have everything or all the information we need to really build the rocket. Uh, what we have to do now is take what we've found out and apply that to modern specs. So a lot of the materials aren't around today, so we've got to find the modern equivalent or recreate the propellant based on what available materials we have. Luckily, it is a an ammonium perchlorite based propellant and which is what we've been working on for the last few years so we have experience it's not a new propellant you know new propellant that we we have to learn um, we, this is surely an advanced propellant compared to what we've done before definitely within our experience for the rocket launcher itself that fires these rockets we already have built it we have ATF approval to build it it is a M47 Dragon style launcher but instead of one large barrel there is three sub caliber barrels um, it is a two inch barrel we have tested the hyper velocity rocket launcher but with black powder rounds so the top barrel is made from high quality steel the two lower barrels are made from aluminum um, that was just purely so we could you know do test fires practice rounds kind of show off the launcher without necessarily shooting a you know, the fully blown hyper velocity rocket out of it. We have finished our first draft of the rocket in CAD software. Uh, we're going to 
take a quick look at this just to see the progress we've made so far. Uh, we're gonna start from the back. Uh, so this is the nozzle section. We have um, the propellant right here in blue. Um, and then in the yellow, that is the phenolic nozzle insert. And what, how that's attached to the motor case is that it's integrally wound into the case. That saves a whole lot of weight. Um, and then right here, we have the, the connecting point. And what this connector does, it holds these pedals and at the end of these pedals that they have these little tab uh, and there's two tabs per pedal and there's six pedals total and when the gases come out they they're impacting these angled pedals and then they create spin for the rocket and once it leaves the tube these pedals will spring out and then they'll create a flare at the back of the rocket to stabilize and it'll be spinning at the same time but once it leaves the tube, there'll be no additional spin imparting on it. It'll just be the spin created from launching it from these uh, these pedal, these metal tabs. Uh, going on, uh, we have the propellant, and we notice here the motor case gets pretty skinny. And what that is, it's uh, you have a beefed up en end which sees more of the pressure, but when you get in the middle, it sees less pressure, so you can have it skinnier or thinner material, and that saves a whole lot of weight. And then at the front of the rocket, we have the enclosure, and that is pinned in place by six pins. And then we have our one pound tungsten rod. It's about half an inch of tungsten steel, uh, roughly 10 inches long. Um, and then we have the cone here that holds it. And yeah, this is designed to, um, on the original, this separates from the rocket. So it has a, it keeps that higher velocity for longer. Um, it's a much more complex system. So we're just gonna keep it simple and have it permanently attached to the rocket. And once it impacts the whole rocket will, and you know, be part of the projectile. Um, and you see, we've also increased the diameter of the motor case as we get here. And there is a this blue line you'll see that's what keeps the pins inside the motor case it is a a wrap around all the way around and it keeps these pins in place in this enclosure and this enclosure can be made from metal could be made from a phenolic plastic anything that can handle the intense heat and pressure um, we're likely going to make this from aluminum and obviously we have tungsten here. Um, these are probably going to be steel pins to hold the pressure. Yeah, that is the current progr progress of the rocket. You can see the other side. This is what it looked like on the outside of the rocket. Uh, but we're very happy with it. Um, so far, we're likely going to make adjustments as we go forward. But you see here, here's the carbon fiber. So you're probably asking what our next step in the project is. We've done the research, we know what the rocket, the spe specifications of the rocket, we know what it's made from, we know what the propellant formula is, we know all this information, now we have to put it into practice. Uh, so we first need to get a filament winder or find someone with one in order to make the custom motor cases. Um, that is going to be the most crucial aspect of the project because you need an ultra strong but ultra lightweight material. And the only way to do that is have a filament winder and make these custom cases. Um, from there, we get all the metal components made. Uh, I'm looking into either having 3D printed or machined or doing a hybrid of both, depending on the component. Uh, and then we're gonna do a lot of static tests of the propellant. So we'll get a met metallic motor case and we'll test different formulas to try and recreate the original uh, propellant. We have the thrust data. We have a lot of the graphs. So we're gonna look at those, try to replicate those as close as possible to get the same kind of burn time, thrust, the uh, specific impulse. Um, and then from there, the hardest part, I think, is going to be finding a place to shoot this rocket. Uh, this is not something you can go to the gun range. This has a range of potentially a few miles. Uh, we don't want to, you know, safety is a priority. So we're going to make sure or 
that we're going to fire in a place that if this rocket goes haywire or blows up, no one is ever going to get hurt. We're going to remote test fire this. No one's going to be even remotely close filming. Uh, we're we're going to you know try to do high speed filming, but definitely remote. Uh, everyone far away, um, you know, have some kind of a remote start in even firing it, have a remote ignition system. Uh, and we'll go from there. But uh, that, that is currently what we're doing next. Um, you know, we just moved to Florida, so it was a pretty expensive move. So I'm just trying to, you know, build up enough funds for this project. And if you're wondering how you can help, there's a there's a few different options. Uh, if you want to, you know, make, you know, one of the first civilian owned hyper velocity rockets and rocket launcher ever made. Um, what you can do is uh, easiest thing would be purchase our books, maybe uh, tell a friend about it, you know, maybe share the books with people, you know, maybe they want to pick up their own copy. Uh, we don't get any ad revenue um, from YouTube or any, you know, social media. We rely pretty much solely on donations of parts and materials, as well as um, royalties from our previous books. So if you can pick up a copy, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, another thing you can do uh, if you're a company and you want to sponsor this project, uh, you know, put a put your sticker on the rocket when we fire it or something like that. Um, you know, you just want to see this project come to fruition. That's greatly appreciated. You can contact me privately if you want to be a sponsor of this project. And uh, another thing, if you have maybe spare tungsten rod. Um, there, that's another expensive component. If you have, you know, half inch rod of tungsten steel, uh, we would definitely uh, appreciate the donation of those. Uh, but yeah, overall, just uh, those are the, the the best options to make this thing a reality. Uh, we we've built the launcher. Um, we just need to work on propellants, make the motor cases, and then figure out where to shoot this stone thing. Just wanted to say thank you to everyone that picked up the M two O two flash book. Uh, it was a, a crazy project. I'm, I'm glad it's finished. We also have a second edition of the Panzerfaust book coming out soon. That has a lot more information, a lot better images, draw, graphics, just a whole big improvement. So if you want to check that out, we would really appreciate you uh, picking up a copy. Thank you, everyone, and uh, have a great evening.